All right, our two solutions have set it out quite nicely. This solution is quite red, but I don't know why that is. But if we shine some light through it, we can see that there's really no suspended solids in that. Uh, one interesting point though, is I just measured the pH on a thought, um, and it's quite considerably basic. So I didn't think any lithium would leach, but the fact that it's basic makes me worry that perhaps some lithium is leached out. So instead of discarding this uh, top layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep and most of it's liquid, so if we get no yield at the end, we can always go back and check that maybe all our lithium has been um, sort of just leached out of the cobalt oxide substrate. All right, so here's our black solid in here, black suspension. I'm gonna be using my azeotropic nitric acid, which is 70% um, concentrated, just so we can keep the volume fairly low while still dissolving everything, because all the nitrates are gonna be quite soluble. We should see a nice color change as we go from this black suspension to the cobalt nitrate. All right, I reacted with nitric acid and nothing happened. So much so that I just ended up boiling it dry. <laughs> well, virtually dry. Uh, and there was no reaction, so that's a little worrying, but we'll use hydrochloric instead and hopefully that maybe reacts with it, hopefully. Or maybe it's just all graphite and I filmed this first part of the series and got it completely wrong. There's a channel very similar to my one here, actually, um, the Canadian Chemist. Well, I mean, it's similar, but it's better. He extracted cobalt from lithium, cobalt oxide, and this, he used hydrochloric, and the same thing happened to him here, and it's a good tip that this actually releases chlorine. You wouldn't think it would, because you're like, oh, well, cobalt oxide just goes to cobalt. Chloride, there's no chlorine involved, but because cobalt likes to do, you know, different oxidation states, and it can jump around a bit, and it ends up oxidizing the acid to chlorine, so it's a good idea to do this outside. You know, for everything inside the, not the roses, the everything inside the lab, you know, starts to rust so much more when there's chlorine gas present. All right, I let it go overnight and it didn't really do much, but now I'm heating it. It's really picked up the pace quite a lot. Large stench of chlorine, which is the smell of success, really, and burning, but mostly success. All right, so everything has filtered well. Um, and we're left with this weird, it's sort of greeny really, this solution. It's got a slightly weird kind of browny colour to it as well, but I think that's just from microscopic particles of graphite that sort of um, can't be filtered out, but they're just sort of stuck there. So I talked a lot about the separation methods um, we could use in the previous video. As per usual, the comments section suggests better ideas than I have. What we're going to do is we're going to drop out the cobalt as the oxalate and then drop out the lithium as the carbonate because the carbonate, I didn't know this, has quite a low solubility so that's, that's really great. The oxalate should perhaps drop out the iron as well if there's any iron in there. Um, and I don't know much about anything else. Hopefully there's no copper in there because that will probably come out with the lithium instead. This method should be fine seeing as we didn't go about um, putting any copper in, in, in with the acid or anything like that. The cobalt oxalate is going to be quite contaminated, but really I'm, I'm kidding myself if I think I'm ever going to use that cobalt anyway for anything because I have lots of cobalt salts and I don't use cobalt very often anyway. Really the cobalt is just being waste. So we've got a concentrated oxalic acid solution here, and we're going to be adding it uh, to our cobalt solution. Oh yeah, you would have a colour change. Mm -hmm. Now we can see it's a bit of a pink colour. I was really hoping something would precipitate out. Uh, we'll give it a minute to think about it. I chose the oxalic acid method above all the other choices and I'm really starting to regret that because it's really not performing well. It's been a couple days and no cobalt oxalate has precipitated out. We've got a whole lot of stuff at the bottom here. Uh, you might be able to see, but that's just excess oxalic acid I've just dumped in because um, I got a little bit frustrated, which, you know, wasn't a smart decision, but I think we should get away with it. Um, why the cobalt oxalate hasn't precipitated out, I don't know, so I might just heat it. Um, all the oxalic acid dissolves when it's all hot. Might also add a little bit of sulfuric acid because I think that might be affecting it. Just something to do with the acidity of why it's not precipitating out. That seems to be quite often the case with uh, this metal coordination polymer stuff like that. 
Alright, instead of being pink, it's now uh, kind of nearly black. Um, and it's heated up, so I don't know whether this is progress or unprogress. It's boiling for a while, and it's actually not black, it's just a concentrated green solution. See that through the light, you know, but there's nothing precipitating out still, which is really quite frustrating. In case I haven't mentioned that before. Alright, on cooling, we see that the mixture is gone back to being pink. Uh, and we still just have oxalic acid at the bottom, except this time the crystals are bigger. So that's not a success in the slightest. What I believe the problem is now, seeing as we tried acid and it didn't work, is that it sort of needs to act as a double displacement, right? We can't just have oxalic acid plus cobalt chloride equals cobalt oxalate plus hydrochloric acid. We need something like sodium oxalate plus cobalt chloride equals sodium chloride plus cobalt oxalate. So we need that extra... Um, cation there which I was trying to avoid and I hope this method avoided because that was the hope that we could avoid excess alkali metal ions. I'm gonna decant off a lot of the solution from those huge oxalic acid crystals down the bottom and add some potassium hydroxide to it and at some point we should see all the cobalt oxalate precipitate out hopefully. Alright we want to put as little potassium hydroxide in here as possible. Done it! Woo! Finally! Look, it's a pink precipitate. It's actually cobalt oxalate. We've done it. Just had to pump in far too much potassium hydroxide, which means I really should have done that initially, not try to make it acidic. That was that was a wrong decision. So we're just gonna let this cool down and stir for a little while, just so we get complete precipitation. But now that I think we've triggered it to, I, I see no reason all of it won't precipitate out. Alright, the solution is slightly yellow, um, it's like a bit sort of bleachy coloured, I don't know what that is from, so it's not perfectly clear, but all the cobalt oxalate has precipitated out, so that's great. And there's also some uh, clear crystalline masses in there. I was just going to filter everything out, but then I realised lithium oxalate um, has quite a low solubility, it's about 8 grams per 100 mils at 20 degrees, so when we're at basically 0 degrees, all that crystalline mass could actually be our lithium or contain a large component of our lithium. So, um, when don't, I don't want that to happen. I don't want to get to the end of this and not have any lithium. So, um, we're just going to let it warm back up again. But now all the cobalt has precipitated out. We can just go filter that off in a second. Um, because we want our lithium to remain in solution. So, because the carbonate, we're going to precipitate out as a carbonate, which is much lower in solubility. But if we start removing it now, then we're not going to have anything left. Here's our cobalt free solution. Unfortunately, it is a little bit acidic. So instead of adding the sodium carbonate straight away, I'm going to add some sodium hydroxide in there to um, neutralize any acid. And that way, if anything else precipitates out, um, in the meantime, we know it's not our lithium carbonate because we've still got some colour to this solution. I think it may be iron rather than putting iron hydroxide in our lithium carbonate. This at least allows us to separate it if that happens. Ah, I forgot to press record on the camera. Honestly, I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. Anyway, in this case, we've added some sodium hydroxide. It's now basic. But we've got some huge precipitate in here, so I'm going to filter this off because it's not our lithium. It's something else because I don't think the lithium precipitates out like this. So, yep, yeah, that's why we added the hydroxide first. Alright, the moment of truth has arrived. Let's add some saturated sodium carbonate solution and see if it precipitates out any lithium carbonate. And we can see our solution is full of precipitate. Granted, it could be anything, but... It is like near boiling temperatures and there wasn't anything precipitated out before we added the sodium carbonate. It's not a whole heap of solid in there, um, but it's some. So I'm very pleased about it because I was starting to think that this project would not have an outcome at all. So here's our final product of 0.8 grams of lithium carbonate. And you might be thinking, 0.8 grams, that doesn't sound like very much, that doesn't sound like a good yield, but actually, it's a terrible yield. Amazingly, lithium carbonate is only 19% lithium by mass. So, 
If we assume our calculations from the very start of the project were correct and we had 7 grams of lithium, lithium ions in solution in all those batteries, we get with 0.8 grams of lithium carbonate, it comes out to be about 2% yield. And that's very bad. <laughs> so it really begs the question, where did all the lithium go? And our thoughts return back to, past all this garbage that's here, um, that over there, our lithium solution left over. Maybe the lithium did leach into that and only a small proportion remained to be recovered here. So we can test that by adding some sodium carbonate to that solution here. Um, and see if anything new precipitates out so we can increase our yield past 2%. Alright, this is the supernatant from the lithium cobalt oxide. It's just, a, just about half of it. And we're going to add some sodium carbonate solution in here. I was quite hopeful that we were precipitating out more lithium carbonate from this uh, supernatant, but really it's some sort of dark sludgy thing. So even if it is mostly lithium carbonate, it's highly impure. I don't think it is anyway. We're really just left with our 0.8 grams of yield. Um, I cooled that lithium carbonate solution down in the fridge. Um, and we get a little bit more out of it, maybe an extra 0.2 grams, which takes our entire yield up to about one gram and that's pushing 3%. But really, we have to ask, where did the lithium go? It's not here, it's not here. Um, and honestly, I don't know. Um, sometimes I come up with the, these ideas of what actually happened to things while I'm editing the video because I get to look back on all the clips really detailed. So if I have any ideas, I'm gonna present it as text now. But as of right now, no idea. Cobalt oxalate here. It's a beautiful pink color. Here we got some other random, assuming metal hydroxide. It looks, it's a bit green, so it could be a cobalt or an iron or a manganese. Um, that came out just as we added the, uh, just as we made the solution basic. So we need to do some tests to characterize the material. I've seen that it has a very high melting point, so it's not an alkali hydroxide or something, because they all have. Uh, melting points around 300 or so, whereas lithium carbonate is like 720 odd. We know it's not an alkali hydroxide. We can also see that from the solubility. It has quite a low solubility, a very low solubility, which sort of discounts it being any of the other carbonates and also not an alkali hydroxide. Also, we can see that it releases carbon dioxide, what well, releases a gas on reaction with an acid. So that really tells us it's definitely a carbonate. To give more evidence of whether it's actually lithium, the final test we really want to do is a flame test. Because lithium has a real red colour to the flame, a very recognisable red colour. I'm a bit worried because we use sodium in the synthesis, even though the sodium will be in here in a very small amount, the sodium will really overpower the flame. But we'll give it a shot and so if we any, see any sort of tinge of red, even amongst all the yellow, I think that's a good enough indication that this is pretty much pure lithium carbonate, just based on the solubility. All right, I have some of the compound on the end of this stick here and I'm gonna chuck on the blowtorch flame and we're gonna look for any red in the flame. Oh yeah. There was just a little bit of red um, and then as the flame got hotter and everything, the sodium just overpowered it all. But we definitely saw the red lithium flame, so I'm, I'm very confident in my analysis of this being lithium carbonate. I know a few of you had interest in trying this yourself, and it, does, it, it was actually a fun project. We would have liked to get a little bit more end product, but if you're chasing the cobalt, see it's a lovely dry pink crumbly powder. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this mini project. Obviously, it was a lot of effort to get this 2% worth of lithium. As part of this project, I thought maybe I would end up as a chloride and then do electrolysis and end up with pure lithium metal. Obviously, with this little amount, we're not going to be able to do the really electrolysis. However, I do have somewhere, the lab is trash at the moment, just ignore that. I do have 100 grams of lithium chloride. So if there's some interest in doing some high temperature electrolysis, I'll add it to the list and we can try and actually produce some lithium metal, but it is quite difficult. 
Um, it's probably a, a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, which is which is quite high. Thanks for watching. I'm rambling again as I do a lot of the end of the videos. Stay tuned. I don't know. Fuck, that's Camp Player's outro. Oh, I'm 